What is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel and if you are new, welcome. My name is Meg and today I'm going to show you how to get Instagram makeup. It's easier than you think. So I'm here and as always I have my assistant back here, Luna, who's taking advantage for her dog napping time. She's a very hard worker. I'm just kidding. She's great. Um, so today I'm going to show you how to get this eye look. I think that this is very Instagram makeup. This is basically all that I see on my feed and I love that people are finally playing with color. I love color so much and everyone's been in such a neutral state for like the last 10 years. I'm so excited to see artists branching out and color becoming popular. And I just want to make this video to show you this looks like a lot and it looks extensive, but it's pretty simple to achieve. Here's the deal. My camera overheated, so I have no idea where I left off. Um, but basically this video, I'm just going to show you how it is easy and achievable to get these bright, colorful makeup looks. I love this. The only thing I hate is that I get inspired to do this stuff when it's midnight and no one's going to get to see it except for the people on the internet. <laughs> um, I'm so happy with how this turned out. I wanted to have like those sunsetty colors and then like really cool tone tra contrasting colors of like the blue and the purple. And I'm so thrilled with how this turned out. I use one, two, three, four different palettes. So this is most definitely a look where it's use what you have. Um, and I will give you recommendations along the way. Just to show you, one of the main palettes I use is by BH Cosmetics, taking me back to Brazil. Um, I used two colors out of here. This palette, I believe it's either 12 or $14. So if you can pick it up, it's something that's good to have if you want to dabble into colorful makeup, but you don't want to invest a lot into it. This palette, I probably could have achieved something very, very similar using all colors from here. But I did use a lot from here. I used three colors from my Jeffree Star Thirsty palette. Um, again, it definitely has like those brighter colors in here. So I absolutely love this palette so much. Um, from the Jaclyn Hill and Morphe Vault Collection, I pulled Bling, Bla Bleh, Bling Boss. And I mainly just use this dark, deep, bright, royal purple. I love this color. So I pulled from here. And then I also pulled a full few cup. This is what happens when I do creative looks at night. I'm tired and I can't talk. But I mean, I can't ever talk in my videos. So I guess it's nothing new. Um, I also pulled some colors from the Urban Decay and Kristen Leanne palette. Kind of matches my eyes a little bit. Um, so I pulled some colors from here. I ended up using a highlighter. My Another color to transform shadows is a highlighter. So this is the Ofra Cosmetics Glaze Donut. I use this to add some shimmer and brightness to the look. So if you'd like to see how I threw this eye look together, let's go ahead and jump into it. For my base, I just lay down some concealer. I'm patting it out with a damp sponge, and I am not setting this. If I were to set this with a translucent powder, it would kind of put a veil over the base and make it smooth. However, I find with brightly colored shadows, if you really want the pigment to be there, it can kind of veil those shadows with the powder already being on top of the base. So I love working with the tacky base to keep the shadows nice and vibrant. First, I'm going to pick up this bright orange eyeshadow, and I'm also going to be dipping into this solid, I guess you could say it's like a Barbie pink. Taking a fluffy blending brush, I'm just patting this into my crease and making a shape. I want more of a rounded eye shape, so I'm not going to be having any sharp edges on the outer part of my crease. And this is a technique that you want to use when working with a tacky base. Because it is tacky, it's really hard to just, you know, glide your brush right over and blend it out. So the best thing to do is to lay the color down where you want it to be. And then once that powder from that shadow is there, you can work on blending it. Um, but the more we layer the shadows, the more it will sort of blend itself, if that makes sense. So I'm just really packing this orange on from inner to outer corner. And I'm bringing this pretty high up on my brow bone. Picking up that bright pink, it's kind of like 50-50, so I'm putting the brush right in the middle of where that orange is, so half of the pink is going onto the orange, and the other half of the pink is kind of going onto my lid. 
It doesn't matter if you get the crease shadows in your lid because we will be cleaning that up later. So that's kind of another benefit of doing these looks is that they're kind of a hot mess until they're not anymore. So I'm just repeating the same steps, just patting the hot pink from inner corner to outer corner. I'm going back over the outer edge with that orange because it got a little lost with the pink and this is just part of the process. It's just going back and forth with the colors until you get the payoff and the look that you are happy with. To blend that out and for kind of my brow bone but not really my brow bone, I'm taking this bright yellow. It is so hard to find a good bright yellow eyeshadow. I absolutely love this one. So I'm taking that again on a fluffy blending brush. With the lightest, lightest pressure, barely touching my skin, I'm going to be doing back and forth windshield wiper motions to blend out that edge. That is another way to blend shadow with a tacky base. You just want to use really, really light pressure. And these looks do take a little bit more time than normal because you're focusing on building the color up so much. So I put probably about three layers of this yellow to build it up to the vibrancy of what I wanted. I am moving on to this hot peach, hot coral color and with a different fluffy brush, this one is a little bit more compact so it's going to pick up more pigment and put down more pigment. I'm really focusing this on the closest part, like the closest to the center of where my lid and crease meet. And because we already have that pink down there, I don't have to focus so much on padding. I can just kind of lay the first layer on and then just work on blending with windshield wiper motions because I really wanted it to be more of an orangey red vibe and that pink was just throwing me off a little bit. Once that is laid down, I am going to move on to the actual brow bone and this is a really bright highlight. I'm going to be picking this up with a very small pencil brush. I love this brush specifically because it has some fluffiness to it and it's perfect for the lower lash line, the inner corner, the brow bone. So I just love taking this highlight on this brush and really packing it right under my arch and then I will blend whatever's left on my brush throughout the rest of my brow bone and this effect. Oh, it just looks so beautiful, especially when you have so many mattes going on on the crease. I just love doing this just for a hint of a pop. I really wanted to use a true gem purple. I mean, the name is really self-explanatory here because it's the perfect way to describe it. And I'm just going to really pack this color on to my inner and outer lid. And I'm using a flat shader brush or you can use a concealer brush for this. Anything that is just very flat that's going to pack on the pigment and powder will work. So once I build this on the inner and outer corner of my lid, I'm going to take the littlest amount of this, tapping most of it off, and blending that into my crease and I'm not going to blend it up high at all. I want to keep it as close to my lid as possible. It is time to gear up for the spotlight eye. So I am back with my concealer that I use as my base and a concealer brush. And basically I'm putting this right on the center of my lid. So when you look straight forward at a mirror where your pupil is, that's kind of where you want to line it up. And I'm taking this just slightly above where my lid ends. So when my eyes are open and I'm looking straight forward, you'll be able to see the hint of the color that we're gonna put on top. Once I have the sort of shape and the area mapped out, I'm just going to take some more concealer, bring one main section down my lid, and then I will work on blending that out. So I will just feather that out with the concealer, and then I also go in with my finger and pat the edges to help blend the concealer into the shadow so it's not super harsh, and it'll help with the eyeshadow application not looking harsh either. Practice definitely makes perfect with looks like these, so that's why I've been throwing a lot of them up on my channel with a cut crease, halo eye, spotlight eye, because it's something that I really want to master as well, so we can grow together. For the spotlight eye, I'm picking up this aqua blue. It's kind of like a bright ocean blue color. That's what it reminds me of. And I'm just going to pack this right on top of the concealer. 
This is another great thing about doing eyes first because when you're working with vibrant colors and you're doing this with the tacky base, you're gonna be using a lot more product. You're gonna be packing on a lot of pigment and chances are no matter how great the shadow is, you will get some fallout. So it's a lot better to be safe than sorry. For the next color, look at the one that has the motion around it. I ended up not using that blue, but I ended up using the one that has a blue shift and overlay to it. This is gonna give a really nice shimmery effect to the spotlight of the eye. Again, to keep it less matte looking. I like this, but I was not satisfied, so I went back in with my highlight, and I'm gonna be packing this right on the very center of my lid to brighten it even more. I'm just feathering out whatever is left of the product to the outer edge, and I just love how this turned out. It kind of looks like there was just a beam of light right in the center of my lid, and that's exactly what I was going for. For the upper lid, all that's left to do is to add some eyeliner. I'm just taking a liquid liner and I'm putting a very, very thin line across my lashes. It's really going to help um, your mascara and falsies look cohesive with your eye. It helps make it blend a little bit more. I did not want to do a dramatic wing. I didn't want thick eyeliner because I didn't want to cover up everything we just created. For the lower lash line, I'm gonna set down the same base, so I'm just picking up some concealer on a fluffy brush, and I'm just going to blend that into my under eyes. Going back in with the first two colors we used, I'm gonna mix them both together on a flat shader brush, and I'm really going to pack this onto the lower lash line. Again, it's gonna be from outer corner to inner corner, and I'm also gonna blend this out quite far because I really love a blown out under eye. Here you can see my shadow isn't quite aligning into a cohesive shape, so I'm just taking a makeup wipe and just cleaning up the edge so everything is just blended together instead of going at an upward angle on my lower lash line and then kind of blobbing out on the side. Going back to that purple, I'm taking that same fluffy pencil brush that we used for the brow bone highlight, and I'm just going to pack this on the inner half of my eye. I'm not taking it all the way across, just in the very inner corner. And for the outer half, I'm going back with that ocean blue color with the same brush. I'm going to, you know, combine them both together in the middle. I always like to take a play on what I did up top and bring it down to the bottom. And this is just a different way of combining all those colors together to make the look more cohesive. Once I have that finished off camera, I'm going to put on the rest of my face. So I also have my top mascara on and because I have my concealer and everything on, I can truly blend the edges of my lower lash line so it's not so harsh looking. So I'm just going back in with that orange and just blending out the edge of the orange pink. Then going back with the yellow, I am going to repeat the same thing and just blend the very outer edge of my lower lash line and I'm going to connect that all the way up to the yellow that's in the crease. The blue wasn't popping for me as much as I wanted the outer corner, so I just laid down a creamy white eyeliner on top of it and then I'm going to go back in with that blue pigment, pack it on top of the white base and it's going to help have that blue show up a little bit more and stick better and be more present with the other eyeshadows. Really the last step here is to add that highlight I've used so many times in this tutorial to the inner corner. I'm going back in with that fluffier pencil brush and I am packing this on because I also want my inner corner to shine bright like a diamond. Off camera, I'm applying my lower lash mascara and my Ardell Wispies. I know I have been keeping this pretty brand free because I just want to encourage you to use whatever you have lying around, but if you're interested in products, it'll be all listed down below. That wraps it up for today's tutorial. Oh, I'm so happy with how this turned out. Um, I hope I explained it in a way that made you feel comfortable try to try something like this at least. Um, and I'm just, I really love this a lot. I definitely want to recreate this and actually wear it out.
because this makeup deserves to be celebrated. So if you would like to see more from me, don't forget to subscribe. Check me out on my other social media. I will have it listed down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Let me know in the comments below, would you consider trying colorful makeup like this? Did this help you at all? Or are you still gonna go out and rock your neutrals, which there's nothing wrong with that because 90% of the time, that's what I do too. Thank you so much for being here and for watching. I'm signing off. I will see you later. Luna says goodnight in sweet dreams, and we will see you next time. Bye, everyone.